Holy! On a proc. Look at this. Oh my god! Then <laughs> destroy him. Here it comes, here it comes. Ready? Oh my god! Oh my god. Anyway, farewell. Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming Videos. My name is Holo and that is the bleed build that we are running today using the all-powerful stab yourself technique. I, I really, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You were just looking at some PvP clips and PvE clips of this build in its early days. It is insanely effective by buffing yourself with bleed damage, with attack power boosts, with attack power boosts that come from bleed damage. It's pretty ridiculous. I'm going to explain everything, show you some examples on both sides of the gameplay, and yeah, give you the reins to go mad with this ridiculous build. So let me explain the build and how it works really quickly so that we can tell you how to do it yourself. I am running two Uchi Katanas with blood affinity on them, which increases the blood loss buildup. I'm running whatever talismans you want to. Ultimately, I go with the Urge Tree's favor. I go with Radigan's Sword Seal, the one that gives me plus five to vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity for slightly more damage taken, but Jesus, it's irrelevant. And then finally, the Crimson Amber Medallion at plus one, just to increase my overall health. Very importantly for the build though, the most important one is the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. This means whenever I get a blood proc and get that burst of damage, I get a 20% attack power increase. And that lasts a long time. Considering I'm constantly proccing this blood proc, it's basically the whole time I'm fighting. When you combine that with Sabuku, which is the Ash of War that we have on both of our katanas, take a small amount of health to buff up my weapon. While that buff is on, I am dealing even more blood proc to the point where it's ridiculously fast that actual proc goes off. And then it gives me raw attack power on top of the talisman that's giving me raw attack power. So these combined, it's pretty ridiculous. One warning I want to give you for Sabuku, the Sash of War, when you're dual wielding in the way that I am, you can accidentally get rid of the buff by sheathing the weapon that is buffed. So I've sheathed it, I bring it back out, the buff is gone. You do not want to accidentally do that. You need to do this in the correct order to get both of the weapons buffed. So what you do is you two-hand the offhand weapon. Then you apply the Ash of War. Now that's applied, we go back to the dual wielding, like so, and then apply the Ash of War again. And as you can see this time, both of my weapons have the Ash of War effective. That's the attack power increase, and that's the blood proc buildup as well. So that's the build, that's what I'm using. Let me show you where it all is, and also make some suggestions for some alternatives if you want to decide to do something slightly different. So, to get yourself your Uchi Katana, you are able to come to these catacombs, the death-touched catacombs. The nearest grace to that is the Saints Bridge. This is the north side of Limgrave. We can do this immediately upon leaving the first touch, running straight up here and running into the catacombs. I'll just quickly show you where it is from the grace. So we're just going to follow this path until very quickly, we're actually going to see on our left up there a statue. If you use those statues, they will point you to secret locations, usually uh, tied to catacombs. But it's pointing this way. We go this way, and on my left, right here, next to this glowy ghost, is the catacombs. Very easy to find. Once we go in there, we don't actually even need to fight the boss or kill any enemies. The katana is just progress the area, and eventually you will come across it on a ledge. Uh, you must go this way to open the door for the boss anyway. So yeah, super easy to get this super early on. Now obviously in the build, I'm using two Uchi Katanas, and that's a problem that you may realize, hang on, there was only one Uchi Katana in that catacombs. Where did he get the other? Well, you have two options for that, I'm afraid, which is why I'm back at the main menu and picking a character. One of the classes, the samurai, begins with the Uchi Katana. Meaning, all you need to do to get a second one is go to that catacombs and grab it, and boom, you're ready to go immediately. But what if you picked something else? Like me, for example, on this character, I picked Vagabond, so I didn't get a second Uchi. So how do I have another? That is by having the power of friendship. You see, in Elden Ring, you can't drop just anything. They have really restricted it, but you can still drop items like weapons for one another. So if you have a friend who has an Uchi Katana from that catacombs and they're not planning on using it, or they could just make a samurai and load in and then you summon them, and drop the Uchi Katana for you, then there you go. That's how to get your second Uchi Katana. Unfortunately, those are our only real options. 
either have picked the Samurai class to begin with, or have a friend drop it for us. Fortunately for us, there are other options than just the two Uchi Katanas. If for some reason you cannot run a second one because you don't have someone to drop it, or you're not going to make another class, or whatever, you have other options. Arguably, the most reliable other option is going to be the Naga Kiba Katana, which also has bleed buildup. It's just heavier and slightly statistically worse when upgraded. However, still very viable. And I mean, look at the size of these things. They are much bigger. They have greater range. So it's not a bad option at all. Meaning, worst case scenario, you could be running an Uchi Katana and a Naga Kiba together instead of two of one. Lastly, my final suggestion is the Rivers of Blood Katana which looks incredible and is in fact a really solid katana option it's just it has the corpse piler as part of its kit as its ash of war which we're not going to be able to change seppuku is ultimately the best bleed build up we can have but this is a great katana as an option so ultimately you could be running two uchi katanas you could be running two nagakibas you could be running one of each you could run the rivers of blood and then any of the other katanas you're looking for blood bleed up and these are all viable options it's just I believe two Uchi Katanas is the best one statistically. Awesome. Now you've got your weapons. Where do we get Seppuku from the Ash of War that is really vital to this build? You need to come to the Freezing Lake Grace or the actual Frozen Lake itself, which is, of course, in the mountaintops of the Giants, one of the late game regions, the Frozen Area, whatever you want to call it. And in the sort of northern point of the Frozen Lake is this sort of tree stump coming out the ice with the jellyfish around it. It is a invisible beetle that is circling this sort of stump where I've highlighted with the markers. And from the footage of me actually doing it, you'll see me take up a position and wait for it to run into me and then just hit it or AOE it as it's running past me. And that's how I get it. It's quite simple to get and very effective, obviously. What about the talisman, the all important Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Okay, so to get that awesome talisman, we are going to need to come here to Lindell, and we're going to have to go to the catacombs below. This is uh, the grace that I'm standing at, the Avenue Balcony. This is on the main road, so you enter via the ramparts here, you go through the side, and you make your way to the main road. Down the main road on your right is the grace that I'm standing at, Avenue Balcony. Let's head down then. So to get to the catacombs, there are a lot of different routes, to be honest. There's, there's quite a few options you can have, but I find this is just going to be a really straightforward way to get down there. We're going to go down a well. Once this guy stops body blocking me, thank you, my good sir. What a nice guy getting out of my way. We're going to turn to the left corner here on the left side of the dragon wing there. And we're just going to jump straight over this wall. And there's going to be a well right here. And drop down the well. Beautiful, we are now entering the sewers and the underground area we need to be. And progress. With that pesky guy out of the way, let's leave the grace and turn left. On our right will be an entrance with a ladder. Here it is. I'm going to drop down. And what we're going to see is a sort of pipe area. Fell down here earlier. You want to be careful with your footing because all the way at the bottom is where we need to go to the catacombs. But obviously we do not want to fall to our death. So be very careful with where you step. There's going to be a lot of the gargoyle guys that are attacking you from the catacomb area. I guess this is where they live. And we're going to want to go to the right here. Drop down where this item is. Very careful not to fall all the way. We're looking for a way to drop down essentially. Which we're going to see right here. Let's drop down, turn around, we're going to carefully drop down to the left, should be fine. On your right, inside of here, away from the lobster, and on our right down below, perfect, right by my point, is the entrance to the catacombs. The reason that I've included this in the video is because it is truly, like, convoluted. It takes a bit of effort to get here. But once you're here, we must go defeat the boss to get the talisman. Just to help you when you're actually in the catacombs, when you reach the fire trap, you want to hit it so it goes down and then jump on top of it and hit it again with a plunge attack to make it go up. And that's the route you need to go to get to the lever to unlock the boss. Anyway, after you defeat the boss, which is honestly not too bad at the stage I'm at, uh, then we obviously get the talisman that we're after. This is going to increase our attack power whenever we see a blood proc, which is going to be basically always. Now, 
Now you might be wondering, okay, so I have Sapuko, I have my weapons of choice, now how do I apply that to both of them? There are actually a couple ways. Uh, the obvious one is to apply them individually. So we go to Ashes of War, we pick our weapon, we pick the Ash of War we want, we have the enhancement, the affinity that we want, and then cool, we have it. Now when we try to do it again, we can't do it with the same one, it's already equipped. So we use a second one and then once again apply it. But how do I have two, you might be wondering? Well, that comes down to the duplication method. It is a feature of the game uh, using an item that you will find in various places in the open world and all of the hidden content. Ash of War duplication. So if I want another Sepuko, a third one, which I certainly don't, but if I did, this is how I would do it. I'd come to the blacksmith in the round table and I'd be like, okay, duplicate this for me. It costs an item. That is the Lost Ashes of War. They can be found all over the world. We can find a few in Lindell. We can find them in the Mountains of Giants area. We can have a bunch of merchants sell them. Uh, just for this video though, you're going to need at least one right, so I better show you where to get one. Here's a merchant in Kaelid, the isolated merchant shack. This is just above the Dragon Barrow West. It's at the northern point of Kaelid. It's a shack with a grace and a merchant. Here he is. All right, mate. And as you can see, the Lost Ashes of War. He sells not one, but two, so you can get multiple if that's what you want. Then once again, at any grace in the entire game, we can go into the Ashes of War menu and then apply it to our weapons. Now we've got multiple using the Blacksmith's duplication. Look at you setting up, honestly. What are you what setting up? Stab self in the gut. <laughs> All right, see if you can catch me off guard. Here I come! Uh oh, I stabbed myself! <laughs> I pressed the wrong button! All my health! I shouldn't have stabbed myself, that was a wrong move! <laughs> All right, I should have shown you a couple of PvP moments just to show how ridiculous the bleed buildup actually is when, of course, you're landing those procs, which does not take much if you have Seppuku on, obviously, to increase that bleed buildup. But let's try it against this big boy here. Two hits and it procs, just like in PvP. Nuts. There does seem to be a buildup once it procs the first time. There's another hit. So in three hits, it procs. Two hits, three hits. So it took two hits originally, then it took three, then it took three. And then another three by the looks of things. So there seems to be resistance that builds up, but as you can see, it's still ridiculously effective and you only actually need to hit a couple times. Because we're dual wielding, we're hitting multiple times. I mean, look, the crouch hit, that's a two hit right there. In PvP, that's nuts. If you're doing the running L1, that's a two hit, but a bit slower. The base attack is two hits. And with the combination of Seppuku and the actual Lord of Blood's Exaltation buff, when you get that proc, it's raw damage shoots through the roof. Let's try another PvE example. Instead of just one big enemy, let's try a pack of enemies. So I love the running L1 for the gap closing. But as I showed you, I like the crouch because it's the two hit immediately. Look at that, dude. My God. I want to see if he'll block me. If I can get him to block me... Damn, <laughs> any opening, it's just done for him. This time I've come back to a later limb grave boss that I left up. Let's see how much damage the actual blood proc does against a boss health bar. All right, with Summon I Mimic, I've got both of my buffs on. Of course, a Mimic is me, right? He has my abilities, so he can buff himself up as well. Probably do it during the fight so we can see some extra bleed build up. All right, let's see if we can get a proc. Holy damage. Oh my god. Look at that damage. Well, I just get slapped. Two and a half thousand. On a proc. Look at this. Oh my god. It's nothing. Oh my god. That was a dragon. That is the build then. That's what I've been running for a little while. This is your ultimate bleed build guide or the basis of it. The talisman and seppuku for sure. You can choose your weapons. Obviously, I like the katanas because they're fast swinging. You've got things like daggers as options. You've got things like scythes and other bleed weapons. Personally, I like the speed and range of the katanas. So that's what I'm going for. But I think it's both very effective in PvE and PvP. And I hope you guys have some fun if you're going to try it yourselves.
If you have found this video useful or interesting, please do drop a like on it. We're starting to get more into the build stuff here on Rage Gaming. This is the more complex stuff. So if you want to support us in the channel, then drop us a like. And hey, leave a comment if you have any suggestions for the build. Until next time then, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.